Thank you very much, Doc Arif, for the introduction. Let me now share my screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, good afternoon again, all the, uh, all the way from the southeastern part of the Philippines, Surigao, which is home to the famous surfing capital of the Philippines, which is Shargao. Thank you for inviting me as one of the speakers in this Nuni International Seminar Series 5. So today, I am about to present a glimpse of how my country, the Philippines, fare in the tech startup arena. I give you a glance to the Philippine startup ecosystem. So as a disclaimer, um, the data presented here were gathered and collected from sources of organizations that study the Philippine startup ecosystem, such as Philippine Startup Survey 2020 by Isla Lipana, Philippine Venture Capital Report 2020 by Foxmont, the Global Startup Ecosystem Reports 2020 and 2021 by Startup Genome, the Philippine Startup Ecosystem Report 2021 by Gobi Corp PH Fund, and the Philippine Venture Capital Report 2020 by Foxmont and BCG. So these organizations' reports area av uh, are available on the internet for your perusal. So here's the outline of my report. So what is a startup ecosystem? A startup ecosystem is formed by people, startups in their various stages and various types of organizations in a location, whether physical or face-to-face -face or virtual, interacting as a system to create new startup companies. So startups need an ecosystem to breathe and thrive. Startups thrive in an environment where they get support from their community. So a strong community is what forms a startup ecosystem. So startup ecosystems um, consist of ideas, inventions and research, startups at various stages, entrepreneurs, startup team members, investors, mentors, advisors, other entrepreneurial people, and people from related organizations. So from the idea of a startup through the growth and maturity phases, an entrepreneur faces all these stages. So each stage of a startup highlights a unique set of obstacles to deal with and convene. So from, from ideation to concepting, to commitment, to validation, to scaling up to establishing. So if you notice uh, during the pre-startup stage, it's negative two, negative one, and up to zero, because this is still the conceptual stage and nothing is, uh, is still um, viable here until you go to the commitment stage where you now have the minimum viable product going to the product market fit research until you scale up for growth. So having set the, the tone of what a startup ecosystem is and what are the stages of a startup, let's dive into my main agenda of the day, which is the Philippine startup ecosystem in different eras. So I, I divided uh, my presentation into pre-pandemic and pandemic, and also post-pandemic and beyond. So for the pre-pandemic and pandemic, we will talk about the Philippines startup ranking in 2020, as against the Philippines startup ranking in 2021 during the post-pandemic and beyond. And for the, the pre-pandemic and pandemic, we also talk about Philippine ecosystem by the numbers, the Philippine startup verticals or sectors, and investing activities. And for the post-pandemic and beyond, we talk also the rest of the slides about PH ecosystem by the numbers, startup verticals and sectors in, on that year, the Philippines along with the ASEAN counterparts, investing activities, the developments, and the Iron Triangle. 
So these are the updates of the 2020 and the years earlier. So in the 2020 top 100 emerging startup ecosystem ranking reported by Startup Genome, Manila, the country's national capital region, located in the northern part of the country, was in the 31 to 40 rank with a score of five in performance, three in funding, 10 in market reach, and seven in talent. Of course, Jakarta being at the top of this ranking. So you can imagine how we fared so low in this ranking. Congratulations to Indonesia. Also, in the same year, the Philippine startup ecosystem is considered on the rise, ranking 53rd across the globe in the 2020 Startup Blink ranking, advancing by 17 positions from its rank in 2017. The, Philippine, the Philippines also continues to experience an increasing level of startup activity across its regions. Metro Manila recently joined Startup Blink's 100 Cities Club to rank 88 among 1,000 cities across the globe and has advanced by an astonishing 830 positions from its rank in 2017. Of course, Indonesia is within the top uh, 20 in that rank. The Philippines is home to more than 400 startups during that year, 2020 or, or earlier, more than 50 angel investors, more than 40 venture capitalists, and more than 35 incubators and accelerators, more than 120 co-working spaces, and has seen an estimated 47 known deals in 2019. Those numbers are not even um, comparable to Indonesia because Indonesia has a lot of these um, components uh, to make up the startup ecosystem. The Philippines has a competent English speaking workforce, a young population, which has a median age of 25.7 and mobilizing. So many benefits for entrepreneurs, such as access to more mentors, the entry of new funds and investors outside, and the expanding number of successes have propelled the rise of local founders. So the country is seeing a change from an ecosystem dominated by subsidiaries of foreign companies to an appearance of homegrown entrepreneurs tackling in intrinsically Filipino challenges with fresh and inventive solutions. So the expanding number of players and degree of participation from key stakeholders, the growing presence of innovation infrastructures and platforms, and the collaborative culture of a young sector are all factors in the country's ecosystems development. However, despite the great future potential, Bringing the landscape to the next level comes with its own set of concerns or problems. So the absence of external funding has slowed the industry's growth compared to its Southeast Asian counterparts like Indonesia and Malaysia and Vietnam, making it difficult for enterprises to scale rapidly or to grow. In the last two and a half years, fintech startup investments accounted for 80% of the total in the Philippines. Founders focusing on the expansion of Philippine financial inclusion and digital financial services have flocked to the industry, which has drawn both local and regional startups. Since 2018, IT and software has raised $44.5 million or 8% of overall fundraising transaction value. Telecommunications and business to business software development accounted for majority of activity in this area. Since 2018 also, transportation logistics has contributed $18.5 million or 3% of the total value of the Philippine contract. In terms of deal activity, 
startup investments in online retail closely follow the top three industries. Between 2018 and first half of 2020, the industry grew to $12.5 million in declared deal value, accounting for 2% of the total. In addition, disclosed deal numbers in education technology have increased dramatically from 70,000 um, US dollars uh, to 3.4 million US dollars in 2020. Finally, investors believe the medical and healthcare business to be one of the most promising sectors since it addresses one of the country's most pressing issues like the lack of access to healthcare facilities. And then COVID-19 hit. So all of the world struggle and no country or sector is spared. So the Philippines from being 31 to 91 was among the lowest ranked in a top 100 list of emerging global startup ecosystems. According to a report from Research and Policy History Organization of Startup Genome. So the Global Startup Ecosystem Report 21 put Manila in the 91 to 100 rank with scores of one out of 10 in performance, two in market reach, six in talent. So that is too low um, compared to 2020. And the top 100 emerging ecosystems, which are in the earlier stages of growth, are led by Mumbai as number one, Copenhagen, number two, and Jakarta, number three. Even Jakarta um, lo, uh, um, decreased from, from rank number two to no, rank number three, and that is because of COVID. On the lighter note, Manila ranked in the top 10 in Asia and top 20 in the world for affordable talent. On the same report, here are the reasons why startups prefer to locate in the Philippines. So government support, startup funds, and startup community. Another identified opportunity is the fact that um, based on the economic and demographic snapshot of the six largest economies in ASEAN, the Philippines has the second largest population, which is next to Indonesia. And for the, for the year 2020, the country has the third largest um, GDP, which is of course um, led by Indonesia. However, the Philippines lags behind in other categories. It has the second lowest GDP per capita and the lowest GMB per capita of the ASEAN six. So while a lot of Filipinos are now online, many are not yet purchasing goods and services through it, especially in smaller cities that have yet to be penetrated by startups and tech companies. So this translates into the region's lowest internet goods and services spending per capita, which is just 145 US dollars against the region's average of 337 US dollars, excluding of course, Singapore. Meanwhile, local startup landscape remains underinvested. So among ASEAN's six biggest economies, in 2019, only 2.1% of the 29 billion US dollars invested in ASEAN 6 went to the Philippines. This means the country was beaten by neighbors that had smaller populations and economies. So most of the investments went to Singapore and also a big chunk went to Indonesia and just small chunks um, are shared by Philippines, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Thailand. However, Certain factors in the Philippines contribute to a hospitable environment for startups. So here's the picture of the contribution of consumption and digital economy to GDP across the ASEAN 6. So in the Philippines, consumption is 90% of the GDP when the original average is only 67%. 
and pre-pandemic income showed average annual growth of 4.5%. So these imply an emerging middle class with growing purchasing power, which sets the Philippines as one of the most dynamic countries in the region, with a large gap between the contribution of consumption and the digital economy to GDP relative to its neighbors, the Philippines is a consumer economy still finding its way towards consuming goods and services online. So the onset of the world co world, worldwide COVID-19 pandemic impacted the nation severely. So this is not surprising as the Philippine economy has long been reliant on remittances from the overseas workers, tourism, and services, all of which were drastically affected by the global crisis. The Philippines has become a more hospitable space for startup founders in the uh, beginning, the middle of 2020. So aside from the government changes mentioned in the report, internet speeds have grown by 280% for fixed broadband and 203% for mobile internet. And then for digital payments, it has grown to 376% and 459% for both PesoNet and Instapay, respectively. So here's how to understand more about the Philippine landscape and its promise to a better startup future. So these are the numbers. So the population is increasing the GDP per capita is also increasing, okay? Um, although it's um, lower than the neighbors, which is good because um, um, the people will now be um, buying more and more every day. And then there are 89 million social media users in 2021 that grew um, more millions from 2020. The median age is 25.7, 67% of the internet penetration, and 152.4 million mobile connect connectivities. So these particular numbers are really um, meaning something for the future of the Philippine startup ecosystem. So what are the concentration of startups in this in this uh, 2021 era. So the Iron Triangle is a term coined by Alibaba founder Jack Ma, referring to the three supportive and interconnected pillars of the company's sub sustained and continuous success. We have e-commerce, logistics, and financial technology. Similarly, the COVID-19 pandemic saw parallels affecting the fuel digitization of service in the Philippines, covering the e-commerce, logistics, and fintech sectors. So these three industries are the recent pillars of the Philippine startup ecosystem, and their success heralds the success of the, of the ecosystem. Foreign heavyweights such as um, Southeast Asian groups Shopee, Alibaba's Lazada, and fashion marketplace Zalora, which is supported by Ayala Corporation, the country's oldest and largest conglomerate, dominate the Philippines' e-commerce business. So these businesses profited from being among the first to enter the Philippines, having done so in 2012. So despite this, uh, the Govicore analysis claims that 35% e-commerce startups were launched in the Philippines in 2020 and 2021. So currently, the country has over 81 e-commerce startups, beauty products, e-tailer, beauty Manila, flower delivery platform, flower store, and Galleon, a platform that offers products not accessible locally, are all enjoying significant development. So according to the Google Bain data, the Philippines e-commerce industry witnessed a 132% increase in GMV from 5 billion US dollars in 2020 to 12 billion dollars in 2021, making it a sector that benefited the most from pandemic-fueled digitization. This was quickly capitalized 
by local entrepreneurs and founders. So with e-commerce being the big gainer of pandemic-aided digitization in the Philippines, it is no surprise that three of the four startups that raised Series B funding rounds in 2021 have one foot in e-commerce space, such as Kumu, um, Grocery, and Great Deals. On the logistics sector, the onset of COVID-19 pandemic had put the global supply chain to a halt due to lockdown and order. However, the number of investments in the logistics space showed signs of recovery with pledged capital in the local warehousing and logistics industry jumping ninefold in 2020 to, 100, uh, to $740 billion um, in 2021. So logistics is also big time now in 2021 in the Philippines. Currently, the sector is led by the regional unicorns such as JNT, Proudly Indonesian, uh, Ninja Van, and Grab. Intrigo was formally launched in October 2018 with 60% owned by Ayala Corporation and the remaining 40% by Zalora. So founded in 2015 also, another local player is Quad X, an affiliate of the Philippines' largest career LBC Express. And on the finance sector, FinTech is a particularly popular sector among Filipino entrepreneurs in tandem with the rise in e-commerce sales and logistics order fulfillment, financial services quickly moved to the online sphere in the pandemic. So according to, accordingly, this has resulted in over 76 fundraising fintech startups in the Philippines, according to Gobi Course estimates. So with 11 fintech startups being founded between 2020 and 2021, accounting for 4.7% of the total new startups. So these are the major fintech players in the Philippines. We have Gcash, which is now the first and only unicorn in the Philippines. Kmaya, Coins.ph, which, uh, which is actually backed by Gojek, and Discartech. So... The mother company of Gcash, which is Mint, raised additional $300 million in second half of the year from investors such as US-based Warburg, Pincos, and Insight Partners, becoming the first unicorn born in the Philippines. So the firm is currently valued at $2 billion US dollars. So imagine that is only the that is the only unicorn in the Philippines, but uh, for Indonesia. I think you have seven. So prior to 2021, the highest race in the Philippines was Series A. But in 2021 alone, three startups were able to raise Series B and Kumu even raised to Series C. So all three startups come from the e-commerce industry, one of the three pillars of the Iron Triangle, FinTech, e-commerce, and logistics. So two startups also had pre-Series B races, uh, both of which hailed from FinTech and Finance, another pillar of the Iron Triangle. So the country has witnessed explosive growth, not only in valuation, but in the number of startups as well. So the COVID-19 pandemic brought a boom of startups and the trend seems to be going strong in the future. And the three pillars of the Iron Triangle all saw rapid growth during the pandemic, e-commerce, fintech, um, logistics. We also have a good number of startups uh, under, under um, food tech or even ed tech because of the lockdowns. So amid the funding boom, the report predicts that the startup ecosystem in the Philippines 
will experience a growth of 20% to 30% in the future. That's a big um, growth estimate. And by the way, if women and men around the world participated equally as entrepreneurs, global GDP would rise up to 6%. So boosting the global economy by up to 5 trillion US dollars, according to Boston Consulting Group. Data has also shown that diversity in founder profiles and leadership breeds better decision-making in companies. So the percentage of female founders in the Philippine startups has risen from 17% in 2015 to 36% in 2020, and even higher now in 2021. Um, the Philippines is a global leader in women entrepreneurs. Uh, in fact, female founded startups in the Philippines have been among the more exciting deals in the local venture space. Uh, like uh, one startup called Mad Eats is founded by a by a a female, which is now um, cohorted by Y Combinator, uh, a famous accelerator program, and also another um, famous startup which is. Um, led by a female is the Hive Health, which is about um, offering digital health insurance for Filipinos. So now let's, took, uh, let's take a look at the startup ecosystem in the Philippines in the near future through the lens of the visionary organizations like Faxmont and BCG. So one of their base data is the deal activities in just in just first two months of the year. So from January to February 2022, um, there have been six um, or eight deals that happened. And six out of, of the eight um, were actually um, in, in under Series D and Series C. So that's how that deal activities are very rapid uh, beginning um, year 2022. So the Philippines as an increasingly active destination for startups um, is now 52nd of the startup ranking, the startup ecosystem ranking by Startup Blink. And so it's up by one, one uh, rank and then for the global city rankings, uh, among the 1,000, uh, Manila is now 87 from last year's 88. So it, it really grew um, by, the, by the numbers. The Philippines' uh, five-month long lockdowns and countless variations of community quarantines have prompted consumers to go digital, shifting from long-held analog practices. So the rapid digitization continues to be evident in the strength of the fintech, e-commerce, and healthcare sectors amidst the pandemic. So over the last two years, Filipino consumer habits have changed at an unprecedented pace. While some trends were already well underway, the COVID-19 crisis has been both a catalyst and an accelerator for shaping new behaviors. So here are the five trends that will reshape the Philippines supply landscape in 2022. Um, doing more from home, from home, like work, study, transact, and shop, and more. So 82% of the Filipinos have adopted new digital habits at home in the last two years. Next is nurturing communities and national bonds. So the Filipinos now think of family and country first. So 53% feel that community is more supportive and closer than before. Another trend is that taking better care of, Philip of health and wellness. Uh, like um, buying healthy foods and also installing or downloading healthy apps, health apps. 
So 32% growth out performance for health food versus other health categories. And then everyone goes digital. More transactions, more engagements online. So 40 million plus Filipinos are transacting online over twice as much as three years ago. So three years ago, it's only 20 million, but now um, it's 40 million because of pandemic. Embracing the e-finance at scale, like uh, maintaining the e-wallets, the, the e-money, the digital wallets, the digital app, uh, the digital payments. Okay. So, how about the Philippine startup ecosystem verticals this year? Uh, if if the 2021 was about um, fintech, um, logistics, and e-commerce, in 2021, uh, fintech remains strong, and E-commerce is still so exceptional, exponential. So the top 10 countries ranked by retail e-commerce sales growth in 2020 ranked the Philippines as number one. And then uh, according to 2021 e uh, economy C report, um, by 2021 up to 2025, there will be a 22% growth in e-commerce gross merchandise value. Um, there will be an increase of online shopping and 90% Philippine of the Filipino internet users have searched for goods online. That's a, a good indication. And 67.5% of the internet users have purchased goods online. So before, uh, these are these numbers are very low, but now um, it's more than half. The food and beverage technology is also accelerating with a with the increase and or and growth of um, e-commerce. Of course, the food the food and beverage technology is also accelerating, and also. Uh, good opportunities for health tech. So all these promises of stability and growth shall be on the table as the players now don't let their guards down and make sure that the following developments are in, are in place. For the developments, um, we have the Sinigang Valley, which is... Um, more or less similar to the Silicon Valley, but this is um, initiated by startup companies in the Philippines as compared to Silicon Valley, which is actually um, initiated from, from the universities or schools. Um, Realizing the ever-increasing role of digital banking plays in providing access to financial services to Filipinos, Central Bank of the Philippines issued a regulatory framework in December 2020 to promote market efficiency, innovation, and financial inclusivity by, giving, by granting digital banking licenses. Uh, we have a relaxed uh, PSA rules allowing for easier startup listing. And we have recently we have five Pinoy startups making it to the Y Combinator in 2021. So that's also a big deal. So truly, the Philippines is arriving on the global uh, venture capital roadmap, which is a nod to Indonesia's success. We know that Indonesia is the model, the, the blueprint, but, and we are looking up to Indonesia's success. So in terms of global startup ranking, um, Indonesia is now 45th and we are 52nd. Uh, in terms of unicorns, Indonesia has seven and we have one. <laughs> in terms of archipelago, you are you have more islands than ours. In terms of population, you are 276 million strong. We only have 111 million people. In terms of median age, we are not that um, too far. 
in terms of social media users, um, there are more social media users in the Philippines right now. Um, in terms of mobile connections, we are more or less similar. In terms of daily time spent on the internet, Filipinos spend more time than Indonesians. <laughs> they don't, we don't sleep here in the Philippines. And then daily time spent on social media. So we are really um, more serious about our social media uh, accounts. We're spending an average of 4.25 hours per day. Um, in terms of English proficiency index, we are not that far from each other. So um, this particular slide here shows that um, we are really looking up to Indonesia um, with access to independent early stage venture capital. So it, it is only a matter of time before the winners of the Philippine startup scene emerge. So a young, growing, tech-savvy population, the return of entrepreneurial talent, and the rapid growth of foreign venture capitalist inflows present, presents a, a Philippine startup ecosystem full of blue ocean and excellent exit opportunities. So a big thank you to Indonesia as one of our ASEAN models. So after after 2021, of course, Indonesia will produce more unicorns. Um, in our case, we have already produced one, and soon we will have more unicorns. So there will be a preference for camels, by the way, instead of unicorns. Um, camels are startups that have survived harsh business climates and are resilient, cautious, committed, and customer focused over the more common unicorns. So the camels are, are startup companies that prioritize sustainability by balancing growth with cash flow. So they are not that too risk takers. Um, so camels think of balance instead of burn. So Camels have no interest in bit scaling, which is a form of rapidly building up the enterprise and prioritizing speed over efficiency in the pursuit of massive scale. Because if that is done, um, there is also a big um, um, negation later on. So although a digital economy uh, economic gap exists, there is strong potential for the country's market to experience robust growth. So now is a golden opportunity to invest in the Philippine startup ecosystem. According to Core VC, the time is right for the Philippines to take its place in the world as a key player in the technology sphere. According to KR Asia, the once overlooked Philippines market is starting to lure foreign venture capitalists. According to TR Asia also, the number of homegrown startups in the Philippines has almost doubled in the last three years. And according to Startup Genome, the Philippine startup ecosystem is rapidly developing with stronger government support, particularly in high growth services, such as artificial intelligence, big data, and FinTech, among others. So the future is bright for the Filipino startup ecosystem. The Philippine startup scene will boast multiple unicorns by 2025, according to Gubicor. Thank you so much. Simuga Harimu Inda.